to stop me I'll kick down the door, I'll kick down the door Don't try to stop me Family, you are listening to WHCR 90.3 FM. This is PJ, your host, Pajani PJ Flurry. You are listening to our guest today, Rachel Burrell, her track, Warrior Woman, off of her EP released in 2019 with the same title, Warrior Woman. We're going to have an amazing conversation with Rachel today. She's an author as well as a singer songwriter. She's performed all over the city at the Delancey, the Sidewalk Cafe. She's blessed many open mics and showcases, and it is an honor to have her on. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on, and I'm looking very much looking forward to this. Oh, that's amazing. You know, we've known each other for a while. And, um, you know, as life would have it, sometimes you get um, a little disconnected and then you reconnect again. So this our reconnection. So I'm excited as well to hear about all the things that you have been doing, just reading up on you and looking over the things 
the work that you've put out, it it looks like you've been doing amazing work out there. So tell us, how did you get into your your craft? How did you become an artist? Yeah, so, you know, I feel like it in some ways was unintentional, but also intentional. You know, I've I've always gravitated to words. I've always liked words and how they can make you feel. And so from very early, you know, probably around nine, 10, I, I you know, started performing poetry in church um, in Jamaica. Both of my parents are Jamaican and I actually lived there from two years old to 12 years old. So um, I started out performing and it was just something nice. You know, I, I was too young to quite understand, you know, like why I enjoyed it so much and all of that. But, you know, as I got older, in, in high school, I um I started feeling like I needed something to belong to. You know, I was feeling really out of place. Um, my family in some ways is fairly conservative and I'd say I'm, I'm not. And so I just needed an outlet and, and, and a way to release, you know, because um, we, we really don't talk things out very much, you know? So I was like, okay, I need to, I need a way to connect. And so in junior year of high school, I got involved in musical theater and that was the beginning of an awakening, so to speak, you know, from there, I really started writing from there. I started just writing my thoughts down, writing my experiences down. And um, once I the gradu graduated high school and got into college, I started, that was the first time I started performing my actual old work, you know, and that's such a scary thing. I'm still, not at that point what I would consider an expert. I'm just someone who's writing my feelings down. And I want to share them. And what I realized is that because I'm writing about my life experiences and things that I've been through, other people are able to relate and they're able to connect. And for me, that's a beautiful process. You know, that's that's what art is. You know, it's forming a, a connection. It's bringing people together. It's creating understanding. Yes, sometimes there's conflict that's created through art, but um it's a means of at least a conversation start or, or getting people to really see themselves through the art. So once I realized that, I said, man, yeah, this is something I've got to do. And I'm feeling like this is a part of my calling. And singing just felt very natural for me and getting on stage, you know, the, the nerves just aren't a factor to the point where I don't want to do it. So I started feeling like, okay, not only is this a talent that God's placed in me, but it is now part of my purpose where I feel like I need to create and share, you know, and and so that that's more or less how it started and how it's continuing. Very nice, very very nice. So, mm -hmm. what happened? What led to the EP Warrior Woman in twenty nineteen? Yeah, I um, you know, I, I figured <laughs> sometimes you go through certain things and you have to be really strong and you might not want to have to be strong. You know, you might want moments to be vulnerable, but you know, you've got to push through and be that warrior. So there is that side of it, but there's also that side of it. That's like, I feel like I can take on whatever is thrown at me. I'm going to get through it. You know, I'm going to be a warrior that I feel like a warrior woman is just being a boss of your own life, you know, being sure of who you are and walking boldly in that. So that's that's what inspired that track. Just like in spite of everything, I'm still a warrior woman that's so many moving parts comes with that. Being loving, being caring, being empathetic, you know, just being a woman. Mm, that is so powerful. Yes. And what's the response been to that again? I know you put out another one um as well, but what was the the feedback specifically on the the track as well? Warrior Woman was actually the 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 best received off of that project. Um I even and it's it's interesting because even guys were like, that's a track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you know it's it's clear obviously that it's it's a it's a song for empowering women you know but uh, mm -hmm. men there are a lot of men who care about women and want women to succeed and thrive you know there's sometimes this narrative that we're just all in conflict with each other and it's men versus women but 
there's still a lot of unity amongst us and togetherness, you know what I'm saying? And um, so a lot of a lot of guys would come and be like, I really like that track. Way to go. Yeah, yeah, you got that right, you're a warrior woman, you know. But I'd say a lot of um women resonated with that that track, you know, because we 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 know what it, it is to be a woman and to have to be strong sometimes in moments when you know we we don't want to have to be or you know just whatever the case is so that was the most to, to date i think that might be my most um stream song mm, nice nice and then you followed up with an ep entitled this is love february 2020 so this is pre-pandemic still uh-huh <laughs> like tell us literally about that. say that again is it tell us about that that whole yeah because you're you're about to say what i think you're gonna say that was like literally one month before everything <laughs> yes <laughs> i was like had to, i had made up my mind that i wanted that whole project to be about love just celebrating love you know in all aspects mm -hmm. and i'm like excited I did. I lined up a ton of shows. I lined up. I'm gonna have a release. I had everything. Literally, I had a show the the week before everything. That the week. So the week they shut everything down. That week after was gonna be a setup of all my shows, which of course I didn't um get to do. But I, to be honest, I never really got to push this project in the way that I intended to. Um, but it 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 it's just a focus on love, celebrating love. You know, because at the end of the day, like. You know, it might sound cliche to say like, all we need is love. And yes, that's, you know, but love is really the foundation of what keeps the world flowing and what keeps us moving. And um, so, yeah, that was just my dedication to, to, to love and life. Yes, and you are so right. You know, I was on the train with my son one day and I don't know if it was just like the vibe of but we were just having a great day the vibes were so nice and we were just getting so much um how would I say um just goodness just just positive vibe from and we got like seats we were getting um we got something free like somebody in, in this the guy in the store gave us you know extra stuff and it was just a really amazing day. And my son was like, wow, people are so nice and people mm -hmm. are awesome. And I was so happy because sometimes, especially in the city, you feel the roughness of people, you know, mm -hmm. you feel that New York attitude. And I'm like, yeah, we get in love out here, you uh -huh. know, because we're loving people. We're able to receive. People could feel that good energy that we had and it was important for me to point that out to him it's like you you know you are love you show love you receive love you give love and this life can be beautiful oh yeah this life could be so much more beautiful more people would have that foundation of love in their hearts and then that it translate into actions even for strangers yeah yeah I, it's i mean it's important now more than ever you know to mm -hmm. just do our best to be that light you know because there is a lot of darkness and unfortunately there people there's not only darkness that's the thing is that a lot of times we only focus on like what's going bad and that we should ignore it but we should also mm -hmm focus on the fact that there are a lot of beautiful things you know just life in itself can be so beautiful and it you know it when we come together when we you know what i'm saying work together when we are community oriented you know mm -hmm. absolutely and we like to say healthy bodies healthy communities and we've spoken a lot on this show about self-care and self-love and so the same thing translate when you have that self-love and you can now build on that love with your family and then it goes beyond to love in the community and there's unfortunately 
so many platforms out there that focus on the hate that yeah. thrive on the hate that make money you know like cap mm -hmm. on the hate there needs to be that other side that other um art and entertainment pushing love just letting people know that love does exist and oh, yeah. we all have it to to give you know um it, it it's like a psa almost right it's like public service announcement <laughs> no it's true but you touched on something a while ago that's so important is that it the self-love aspect because usually the way we treat ourselves is how we treat other people and how we see the world. You know, if we think we're worthy, if we're kind to ourselves, if we're empathetic towards ourselves, that usually translates to how we treat other people. Oftentimes, if we're, you know, being mean to other people, we're making fun of other people, we're not settled within ourselves. There's something that we need to work out within ourselves and we're lashing out at the, you know, at other people, we're lashing out at ourselves, but um, you know, it's true. It, I would love to see positivity. I would love to see positive news and positive messages and uplifting and celebrating our bodies and healthy food, you know, nourishing our mind, body, and soul. I would love to see that being celebrated way louder than any blog or that's pushing, you know, make negativity and making fun of what this person is wearing. You know what I'm saying? Like every, every, for me, everything is balanced. I'm not naive enough to know that everything's just, you know, always up and there's no downs or there's no black, there's no white, there's no sun, there's no moon, you know, there's a yin, yin and, and yang to everything. So ultimately I'm here for balance. I'm here for balance is that we don't want the scale to weigh heavily in the favor of negativity and hate. We want love and positivity to be right at the forefront too. Very well said. I think you're right. Hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of times bullies think about young people, a lot of bullies growing up are being bullied at home or, you know, another area of their life. And it really manifests how they think about their themselves and the world, people around them. And so when you have uh, love in your life, it is very, it's easier to connect with other people, to care about others, you know, to have that empathy. Exactly. Exactly. So I know that you've gone into high schools and worked with young people. Uh, how do they receive your, your art and the wisdom that you bring? I have to say it's it's interesting, you know, um, for the most part, everyone's been very open. You know, there might have been one or two times where they were initially a little reserved, like, you know, who is this woman? That's What is she going to talk about? You know, and but uh, as we start to get into it and as I start to talk about the power of art and what art did for me, because, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, the reason that I got involved so heavily into art like yes i i, I started performing poetry in church at, at a young age but i that was before i really had been through some things in life you know what i'm saying you know once i got into my teenage years and i'm going through some things in life and i'm experiencing depression for the first time and what that feels like and i'm needing an outlet and i'm learning myself um and i got involved in musical theater and it was that release and you know it was it was a feeling of finding something to belong to like i belong in this place you know um there's a certain belonging that art can create for you and because i know what it did for me this is why it's so important for me to to, to go into schools you know when i have the opportunity um, especially high school because it was around that age where i was at this what i consider a crossroads you know because i feel like the way that i was feeling mentally I, I didn't see a way that it was going to shift. I mean, yes, I have, um, you know, my mom's like, you know, really spiritual, religious, you know, whatever, you know, just, but I still had to have my own journey and relationship with God, right? So at the point, like art was what sort of pulled me out of this headspace. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people are going through things. A lot of people are going through things at home. You know, they, 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 they only have an escape for the time period that they're in school. 
you know what I'm saying, or outside of the home or whatever the case is. So um, I found that the, the, the kids, once they, I give them topics, you know, particular topics that they can write about. And I usually give them the opportunity to, to get up and, and perform it in front of the class if they want. And I'm just always amazed at how many are willing to be vulnerable, um, to be honest. And it's such a beautiful thing. And not only that, is that um, it you it's almost like a relief. You can almost see a relief for them to be able to stand up and share these things. Um, but the other thing is just seeing their classmates like root them on, like, yo, you've got it, da, 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 clapping. And, you know, some people might be shy at first, but as they see someone else get up and do it, then they're raising their hands like, you know, I want to read my piece too. But it's just a beautiful thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing because it's a way for me to stay connected. You know, I, I when I was, when I came from Jamaica at 12, I jumped right into seventh grade. But by the time I got to even junior high, high school, it was such a culture shock. You know, I was like, whoa, you know, and that was before social media and everything now. So I don't even I just think it's very important and to be able to to do this. So because a lot of people feel like they the, the options are limited, you know, especially if you're you grow up in a, in a household where all you see around you is chaos, dysfunction, the neighborhood. You know, this is what it is. You might start to think there are no options. And so I want to go in with an uplifting message and also the power of art and words and, and thinking and releasing, you know, being able to put those words to paper. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And just being able to express, there's so many people that are not able to express their true feelings, but when you're able to put that truth to power through art, people can really resonate with it in a different way. It's taking the the barriers down, right? Because now you you're expressing you're you're connecting with someone on a deeper level so they can feel you now is so important. So many people do not have that. So many people do not have a way to express themselves. So yeah. if if someone is in a situation like that, what tell them is there any advice um, that you can give any way that you can see that if someone is struggling to express themselves how they they maybe can do that yeah you know I would say writing you know because lucky for me I, I went to a school that had like a theater program and that outlet but I think maybe a lot of schools have I'm not I could be wrong to be honest I, I think there are a good amount of schools who probably have you know, like a poetry club or some sort of a club. So I would say, you know, being a part of those clubs, being a part of some activity, because, you know, the thing is that finding an activity that you love. So, you know, if it's writing, if it's photography, if it's painting, because those things just give us a certain amount of peace and joy that, you know, I feel like once we have some sort of a peace and joy, we, we are in a place where we're able to see possibilities. You know, when it's just that we're going from point A to point B, we're going to school, we're with our friends for some time, but then we go back home to this, this, the same, whatever, then there's no space there to sort of maybe look and think of the possibilities. But when we're, this is why I think the arts in school is so important and should never be, the, you know, people should never be cutting art programs or music programs, because I just think the art is, art is so powerful. Like it, is powerful. Art, when directed in the right way, can create movements that change the world. I mean, it can change people, it can help to heal people. So um, I just think having that outlet, you know, just writing, writing your feelings down because the that creates a certain level of acknowledgement. I'm acknowledging th that I'm feeling these things as opposed to running away from these things or blocking it out or pretending that it's not there or maybe, you know, doing something that I shouldn't be doing with my friends because, you know, obviously there's a live and learn process as we're growing, so we're not perfect. <laughs> but um, just, you know, having that outlet, I think start with writing, you know, writing your feelings down, going to your notes in your phone, you know, if you don't have pen and paper and just typing out what you're feeling. Very good advice. You hit it right on the head because that's actually what helped me. I was lucky enough uh, to have a poetry group in a poetry club 
at my high school and that really did help me express myself at that age it wasn't like you know Shakespeare or anything <laughs> but it it was good for me yeah I, you know it helped me grow I had something to do something to look forward to I had that activity so you're absolutely right I guess I didn't feel it lacking because I had it right I we enough to have that outlet so yes put all the arts and um, music mm -hmm. programs back in the schools please okay. <laughs> like, <please stop. laughs> and so we'll take a break the goal selection by Rachel Burrell as well we are going to listen to chaotic world you're listening to WHCR 90.3 FM Truth has a powerful way of coming out Still she lives in the comfort of her lies Not realizing there's no comfort in disguise God up in a fable So freaking unstable Find your way back Baby, you're able In this Okay. 
Welcome back. This is WHCR 90.3 FM. You're listening to PJ's show with your host, Pajani PJ Flurry. Again, that was Chaotic World by our guest, Rachel Virel. And we have a amazing second half of our show because she is not only a singer-songwriter, she's a writer of, of books, an author, four books already in, in different lanes, um, I would say, which is amazing. And I want to get a chance to talk to you about each book. So the first one was um, Memories That Linger, the, the first book. You yes. Yes. Okay. Tell us about that. So Memories That Linger is a short story. It's very short. I, I probably just <laughs> think it's a short, short, short story. But um, <laughs> I, um, you know, Memories That Linger literally opens, the opening line is, is 1224 a.m. And that's literally when I started writing that. So I thought it was, let me put in the actual time here. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm laying in bed, um, as a, probably a lot of people, you know, you're just like thinking, you're thinking, you're up. And, but a lot of times like creative thoughts will come to my head at that time. And I, and my phone is always in reach, you know, trying to do better to keep it a little further away from me. So it's, I'm not tempted <laughs> to reach for it, but, um, it's usually in reach. And so, um, the story is about a young lady, Aisha, who is, you know, in her early twenties and she is you know, at a crossroads, she realizes that she's being haunted by her past, you know, just things that she's been through, just these lingering feelings. She's not doing anything about them. She's trying to run away from, from these things. And because she's trying to run away, it's nothing's changing. And the thing is, we have to confront certain things in order for it to change. Uh, and so she realized that. And so she's at a point now where she's ready to focus on her healing and her growth and going through this letting go process in order to go to the next level in her life. So that's, that's the, more or less what that's about. Mm, very nice. And next is journey to purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. So journey to purpose is actually um, nonfiction. You know, it's, it's really my story of um, finding purpose, you know, so, I, I talk about um, just work life and, 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 you know, like I said, I spent 10 years in sales, but I talk about how that was affecting um, just being in the corporate setting per se, you know, sort of, I think most creative people clash with the corporate setting, just not because it's necessarily a bad thing, it's because we just want to create. But on the flip side of that is, you know, I really enjoy the job, but I, I, I needed, sometimes you need to do certain things in a different capacity in a different way. But ultimately, Journey to Purpose is just about me um, stepping into a life of purpose and sharing just daily life habits that I found useful to helping myself to get out of a funk. Because sometimes life is coming at you and you're and the mountains seem too high and you're really not sure how you're going to overcome this thing and you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like uh, you know what is my life so i have this thing that i say is that as long as you have a pulse you have a purpose so that, when when we, we're still here you know god still has a reason for us to be here but we want to use that time wisely you know we want to use that time living our purpose and I talk a lot about talent and purpose because I feel like the two are intertwined in some ways is that God placed these talents inside of us for us to, to not just sit on them, but to actually share them and to use them to be of service in some way. So I would say, you'll know that you found your purpose when you're, when you are using it to serve, it's not just about you. So this is about stepping into your purpose, encouraging you and motivating you to step into your purpose. And like I said, I have some tips um, that I, wrote about in there to, to get you help you get, get started on your own journey wow that is so powerful and so the next book that you have is lines and in between yes 
Mm-hmm. So that's a book of um, original quotes and original poems. Um, I am not uh, a, I, I would, I'm not like a traditional, you know what I'm saying? Like Shakespeare might have a sonnet and it's, you know what I'm saying? But um, it's poetry. It's poetry that's just true, true, true to everything that I create has just like a real life element to it you know it's just I, I just really want to connect you know connect the dots to to connect to the people um for I want people to feel I want people to think I want people to laugh I want them to cry you know just re- every every human emotion is what I'm bringing to to that so that's original quotes and poultry oh very nice and so this is where the little it's kind of threw me for a loop because <laughs> it went a little, you know, different than the other ones. This yeah. last book, you a sales expert, of course. Yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, it is very different from um, the others, but um, <laughs> I spent uh, approximately ten years in sales, you know, and. Um, the thing about it is that I compare sales to life in a lot of ways. So even though the book itself is um, teaching you strategies and techniques that I've used to be a strong closer and closing deals, it's also a book about life because to be effective at sales is to be effective in life in some ways and in that you have to be adaptable. You know, sometimes what you expect the client to say or do is not what they do and you've got to be adaptable you've got to be able to think on your feet and the other thing is that you've got to be comfortable with no you can't internalize that no and that's a part of life is that we get rejected sometimes is that things don't always go our way and at that point we have to make a decision are we going to say i've been told no five times so i'm not going to try for the sixth time Am I going to be told, am I going to be too fearful to call this client because they might tell me no? So really, even though it's a book about sales, I tie in a lot about how that is equivalent to navigating through life in a successful and meaningful way. Because if you, if you're scared of being told no, you're not going to make the next move. If you're scared of, 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 you're too timid to, to reach out to that client, you're not going to make the next move. And all of these things are important in life in general so while yes you know from the title it's it's it is about sales you know i'm still connecting it to to life because you need to you're not going to be like i said successful in life if you don't know in sales i should say if you don't know how to communicate effectively with people and that's also skill that i think is needed in, in just everyday life um so yeah oh that is incredible i think Actually, I think I want all the books, all of the <laughs> books. Just let me know where to get them. They're, they're all on Amazon. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And did you self-publish or yeah. Yeah. did you go mm-hmm. That's amazing. So did you, are you self-taught? Did you learn how to do all of this yourself as an entrepreneur? Yeah, you know, the... um the 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 writing i mean i i I do a lot of like reading you know i read a lot i've always been like a big reader so i'm reading i'm looking at different formats and even so i formatted i formatted that i mean there are different ways you can format a book you you might choose to indent a paragraph you might choose not to indent it and just double down you know so i i went back and revisited the editing process because it's different for different types of book you know the editing process might look different if you're doing a fiction versus a non-fiction so that part i had to you know go back and really study so that part is like you know not i, I went to school for marketing so that part i had to go and like you know research but as far as the editing like my mom's a teacher you know, my mom's a teacher. So while I edited um, to as I was going along and edited myself to do the final edits, I sat with her and edited because, you know, her, her, um, I mean, she's more experienced than me being a teacher for over 25 years. She just, you know, knows more about certain things in terms of the, you know, the editing and certain formats. So I was able to do the final edits with my mom. Oh, you're lucky. I had to pay like three, four editors because 
I was so meticulous with my books and I know how it, how difficult it is oh, to, yeah. <laughs> to edit copy. Oh man. Ooh, it, it is, is no joke. <laughs> it is not for the week. Every time you think you're done, you're not done. You're like, no. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember one of my books, I went through about five editors because I'm, I was just... Uh, wanting that perfection and I had experience being a publisher for a long time I know it's very difficult to get a body mm -hmm. of work um, edited to be perfect and mm -hmm. even though I went through all of those editors there was still like a letter a missing like on the last page or something I'm like wow we all missed that <laughs> So you're, you're very lucky. Yeah, you don't, the, I mean, you you know. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we took, it took so much time. The editing process takes longer than the writing process. And yeah. so we're like, but even, I, I'm reading this this book now on, on nego you know, the power of negotiating. And it's a great book. It's a great book, you know, but I found like 20 typos already. And I'm thinking like, I, I, honestly, every time that happens, I'm like, dag. I hope to God, like we edited so many times, <laughs> but sometimes you genuinely miss something. And it, it, even though you read through it like a hundred times. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm coming across this, I'm like, dear God, please tell me there's not something we missed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and one thing that I want to say though, because I'm in this woman entrepreneur group and just last, uh, one of the topics was getting started, at least getting started with things that you you need to do because we know books are a great medium, a great platform to get your message across. A yeah. lot of um, businesses now, not a book or a podcast or something that helps you translate either your product or your service or your personality or something like that. Like you really need these extra tools yeah. and, and they also help you express yourself so it's serving a few purposes and sometimes though people get stuck on wanting to have it perfect and because it's not perfect they don't put it out they don't do it you know it holds them back and the whole conversation was around starting just mm. starting somewhere don't worry about if it's perfect or not and it made me think about this book that I, I read a while ago it was one of those hood books but it was mm. so good like the story mm. was so good and there was had to be like a thousand <laughs> <laughs> editing errors in that book like no lie but I enjoyed it I enjoyed mm -hmm. it very much I was able to understand, okay, where the writer was coming from, how difficult it is to edit, and them wanting to get something out there. And yeah. I celebrated that and I pushed through the edits and I was able to figure out most of the time what was going on. And I'm happy I read it. It was a it was a good good reading experience for me so I just want to put that out there yeah. for folks even though it is very hard to get a body of work perfect and you strive for that I think it's great that we're doing something that we're putting something out in the world that yeah. can help exactly. people mm. yeah, and the more we do the better we get so I mean yeah. you have everyone ha starts somewhere but mm -hmm. you know it's about practice and repetition and you know, it's inevitable with the practice, you know, that we get better. But yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. This book I'm reading about negotiation, I'm taking notes. He has great insight. So I'm, you know, not stuck on the, you know, I noticed them just because now I'm I'm paying attention more because of going through the editing process. Like, okay, right. but um, that does not take away from the fact that this man has made some great points in the book, you know. Mm hmm. So in 2003, you collaborated with a spoken word artist, Izzy. Yes. Izzy yes. uh, is, 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 is what? He's, uh, he, he's very eclectic, I, is what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, I-Z-W-A-T-T. -T. Oh, is what, nice. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we collaborated this past summer. You know, he's someone that I had collaborated with before under, a, we, we had a duo called X Black Superheroes. You know, mm -hmm. that's about just empowering 
you know, the community, empowering each other, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we had lost touch, you know, as we talked about, sometimes in life you just lose touch, it's nothing, you know, it's just life. And we reconnected this past summer and, you know, we, we, we just work well together. You know, he said, hey, let's go in the studio and, and do some work. And he, at the time, I really wasn't even thinking music because uh, you can see I was just all focused on just books. You know, I really, and, and because of what had happened with the pandemic, when I wrote This Is Love, I just wasn't in a headspace for music. And he's like, come on, you know, da da. And he came to me with the chorus written for all of the songs. So that was able to, I think that, was it to jumpstart everything because he had the chorus written. He said, just write verses around the chorus. So I already had a frame to go off of. So from there, I just wrote my verses around the choruses that he wrote. And then we got in the studio and we put out a project called Knowledge Wisdom. Cool, cool. So where can people get the books, get your music and follow you? So the all of my books are on Amazon and my music's on Spotify. If you type in Rachel Burrell, you'll see um, my solo stuff. If you type in Is and Rachel, I-Z-A-N-D-R-A-C-H-E-L on Spotify, you'll see that project that we did in the summer. And then um, you can connect with me on Instagram at R the Storyteller, R-T-H-E-S-T-O-R-Y-T-E-L-L-E-R. And I always love to genuinely connect so do connect absolutely can you give that spelling one more time yes uh r the storyteller r t h e s t o r y t e l l e r okay cool do you mind spelling um well rachel is the traditional way and for burrell Yes, uh, B-U-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Okay, yes, cool. Rachel Burrell, amazing music, amazing book, and just an amazing spirit overall. Thank you so Likewise. much. For, thank you. Thank you so much for the but work. But I thought that the first time we met, so. Yeah, right, all those moons ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and it's really great, the work that you're doing, people, so I thank you for that. Anybody that's taking their time to make sure to pour in to the next generation of leaders is, is just great in my book. So I thank you and honor you for that. What are some new things that are on the horizon for 2024? Ooh, good question. You know, I'm still <laughs> mulling that over, but it's, you know, I was just texting with a friend yesterday and I'm thinking about, you know, you touched on um, food, health and nutrition earlier. And I'm thinking about, um, you know, this would also be different from what I've done, but it's all connected. I feel. I'm thinking about doing something related to health and nutrition in terms of a book, because I'm a big smoothie drinker. I have a smoothie every single day. And I was just, you know, really big on like ingredients and the different herbs. So, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about talking about the importance of just overall health and well-being, but I'm not sure yet. You know, I'm, I don't have a set in stone direction and I, and I don't like to force it. You know, usually I like to wait until something just very clear cut comes to my head. Like, aha, this is the direction that you're going in. This is, you know, and it will usually be sparked by a specific idea or a specific thing that I saw or went through. Um, so right now I really can't say, a definite this is I'm toy I'm you know playing with the idea of doing something health related because mm -hmm. it, that is actually something that you know I've been I've doing been doing smoothies every day for like six five six years now so you know and I'm, I've mm -hmm. seen the benefits so but we'll see we'll see you know I guess the short answer is I don't have a set stone direction just yet Oh, okay. Well, let it flow. Like you said, everything in divine timing, everything in divine order. So we'll definitely be keeping our eye out and following you and just being a part of the work that you're doing, supporting you and the the amazing works that you've already put out there in the world. We're definitely going to support that. 
Yay. <laughs> Thank you all for listening and supporting this platform as well. Of course, this is WHCR 90.3 FM PJ's show with Pajani PJ Flurry, your hostess with the most is. Listen, come back same time, same place next week. We'll be here with another amazing guest. Thanks again. Peace and blessings. You want me weak until I can't speak. If I speak, you say I'm bitter. If I speak, you call me angry. If I speak, you tune me out Damn. If I speak, then I'm aggressive you say I'm just too sensitive It's all, all in my head Sit down, mouth bound in step Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout You wanna control me, Mm-mm. and I won't let you no. You wanna control over Mm-mm. me, my mind, my anatomy, all of me Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You want me with my head bowed down If I'm too confident, you'll be intimidated If I'm well spoken, you'll be surprised You want me to hide, you want me with no pride In who I am, I know who I am The original, Mother Earth, precious stone The one you want to clone Tell me I'm lying Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout You wanna control me, and I won't let you You want control over me, over my mind My anatomy, all of me Just let me be, all of me Just let me be You want to nitpick, and fix it quick Bigger everything, perfection is on sale You want me tired, not inspired You want me to think my skin tone is a problem Like I'm not tailor-made Like I shouldn't embrace the uniqueness given to me from the creator It's sick It's sick Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout Silent, silent, hush my mouth Silent, silent, don't make me shout Hush my mouth Ah! Hush my mouth Ah! Hush my mouth No No, I won't Hush my mouth No, No, I won't Hush my mouth Hush my mouth. No, no, I won't. Hush my mouth. No, I won't. Hush my mouth. You can't make me. Hush my mouth. You can't make me. Hush my mouth. You can't make me. Try to stop me.